Dykra Web can be found at dykraweb.chris.bbk.ac.uk. Just Google Dykra Web. You'll need a, an account and password. Uh, apply online, complete the form, follow the instructions. Okay, now we'll look at inputting data. Note that clicking help next to each input box will direct you to the relevant page in the help section. Enter your username and password and enter a protein name. Browse to the data file. This must be a text file and all commercial instruments have the option to generate a text file similar to this, which should be chosen when collecting data. Specify the file format from the drop-down list. Most commercial and SRCD instrument formats are listed. Uh, if you're using CD tool gem files, choose the free options. Enter the input units on the y-axis of your spectrum. That's either delta epsilon, mean residue ellipticity, or milladegrees. If the spectrum's in milladegrees, Dyker Web will later ask you to enter the concentration, mean residue weight, and optical cell path length. Enter the first and last wavelengths of your spectrum. This is usually the highest wavelength and the lowest wavelength in your data. Enter the wavelength step. It's usually one nanometer. Now go to the reference set drop down list. It's best to choose the largest reference set with the lowest wavelength cutoff your data allows. SMP 180 is the broadest range, including both membrane proteins and soluble proteins. There are two versions, one with a cutoff of 180 nanometers and one that cuts off at 190, although the latter is not available at the time of filming. If you have got SRCD data that's good to 175 nanometers or below, you could use uh, SP175. This contains 71 SRCD spectra, which extend to 175 nanometers. If your spectrum indicates that the protein contains a large amount of disorder, um, data sets 6 and 7 are the best choices. Both contain some spectra of denatured proteins. Enter the lowest wavelength to be analysed. This should be the lowest wavelength in the data set. Choose the content analysis program first. Then enter output units. I suggest delta epsilon or mean residue ellipticity and click submit. The next page verifies your input. Click continue. This page shows the spectrum in the output units of choice. You can verify that DigraWeb is reading it correctly and that the spectrum is of the right order of magnitude. And this is why you should choose delta epsilon or mean residue ellipticity as output. Continue. And show extended results. Um, I'll diverge here to give a simplified uh, explanation of how the analysis works. A matrix containing the CD spectra of the data set arranged in columns is manipulated by singular value decomposition. This is a method by which the data is reduced to a small number of linearly independent vectors that form the curves common to all of the data. We call these the basis spectra. Data that reaches 190 nanometers gives rise to three basis spectra, and this increases to five or six when the data is extended to 175 nanometers. So lower wavelength data contains more information and gives better predictions. The algorithm iterates through linear combinations of the basis curves until they converge on a curve that best fits your spectrum. There is also a matrix containing the secondary structures of the dataset proteins derived from X-ray diffraction. This forms part of the calculation so that the back calculated spectrum arrives with an associated secondary structure prediction. The NRMSD quantifies the goodness of fit between your spectrum and the back calculated spectrum and is therefore an indication of how reliable the secondary structure prediction is. If you go to plot, you can see the back calculated spectrum and a graphical display of the residuals. For Conton, the NRMSD is usually below 0.05, but it may be higher for spectra that don't closely resemble any in the database or if you've got inaccurate concentration or optical cell path length measurements. 
Content shows two results. I usually use the closest matching solution for all proteins. In the results table, the total alpha helical content is the sum of helix 1 and helix 2, and the total beta sheet content is strand 1 and strand 2. Go back to the input page and use the CellCom analysis program. You'll find that the NMRSD is usually higher than with Conton. Then use the CDSSTR program. You'll find that the NRMSD is always lower. This is a quirk inherent to the algorithms and doesn't necessarily mean that one gives a better result. Finally, average results from all three.